You're watching the view from Vauxhall Road where it's finished here, Hemel Hempstead Town, nil Dartford 2. Uh, joining me to analyse this game is Dom, and sorry, it's not, it's not a great game to, to analyse in terms of the second half performance. And we, we did speak about it at half time. We said about that second half curse, if you like. I don't want to sort of brand uh, anything too early in the season. But it was 60 seconds in and it was a player that, that you know well. Put the goal, uh, yeah. put the ball in the back of the net for Dartford and, and they sort of really gained momentum from there on in. Yeah, um, we all know what he can do. And first half we dealt with him very well, I think. Second half we, like I said, shouldn't take our foot off the pedal and we did. And it, they punished us. And teams will punish us if we keep doing that. Welling did it. Hampton did it to get the draw. I went at Braintree. Braintree did it. So it's just tough. And it was uh, Samir who popped up with a second free kick. We know that what he can do in those sorts of areas. He is dangerous. Um, and well, he, I think he was just about to be substituted before that as well. So uh, difficult one to take. But in terms of our play, um, where do you think the game was lost today? Um, for, for the Tudors I think we let first half get to our head and before the game we all got together and we spoke about it and that put out the good performance in the first half second half I don't know what it was I think we struggled fitness wise like a lot of the players looked tired and decision making that's the main thing like hard works win, win games and we can't just do it for 45 minutes. You've got to do it for 90. You've got to manage games. Even as if, if it's in spells, 10 minutes, work them, control the game, 10 minutes, work them again. But we just don't have a plan at the moment. You talked there about the players got together uh, at the, before the game. Was that just off the back of the result on Saturday? Is it, you know, as a collective togetherness almost taking responsibility for some of the things that happened yeah so Saturday's performance weren't great we ended up giving up giving the game it wasn't a 4-0 game and a lot of the players were upset and depressed so we just feel like we needed to have a talk to come together more as well because when you take a battering like that it separates a lot of people people get upset people get angry with players so the talk was to bring us together and it did it showed the first half but then I think we just got complacent and they punished and it must be difficult for, for you as a player on the sidelines you, you're now able to come back after today's game which which is a positive but it must be really difficult we spoke to Kyle a couple of games ago and he said exactly the same thing you know you can see things from a different perspective when you're on the sidelines but it hurts just as much because you, they're your teammates they're your colleagues they're your friends so how would that? How would those boys be feeling in there? Because you know you know them better than anybody else. They'd be disappointed in themselves. Knowing the type of performance, they should have gave second half. First half, everyone was buzzing when they got in the change room. Like it was a good performance. We said what we was going to do, and we did it. Second half, we just went completely off script, and it's hard to watch because you know they mean well. You know the boys mean well, and we want to win games. So. And. The season is still it's still young. It's only six games in. It's only August. You know, no no season is uh, defined in the month of August, but the table is now taking shape, and the table doesn't lie at this moment in time. And the team are in the relegation zone. Do you, as players, will you feel that pressure, or will you just deal with it one game at a time, thinking right, if we can now get a run together, we go away. Uh, sort of in the next game and we work on things, we get a result, actually we'll then kick on from there. The mentality should be one game at a time, not focusing on other results. And where we are now, it matters, but it doesn't matter. Like you said, it's early days. And I don't know, a lot of people would remember last season, we didn't start very well. We was we was basically going to get relegated and then we got Mark Jones in and he sorted out the team and we ended up near playoffs. So, focusing on table right now, nobody should really... It matters about Christmas time where you are. So, as long as we take one game at a time and graft results, should be all right. Well, I'm sure, as you know, you referenced there, the manager, Mark Jones, and a short while ago, I caught up with him full, full-time, and here's what he had to say. Mark, after a, a promising first half, that must be a, a bit of pill to swallow in terms of the second half performance. Yeah, no, it is, yeah. You know, it's... Uh... Extremely disappointing again. Um, 
yeah, I thought first half was a pretty even game. Maybe we just sort of shaded it. I thought the attitude of the players was good. Um, and, uh, you know, we looked like um, we were all together and uh, we were working very hard. Uh, we wanted that to obviously continue second half. I think, to be honest, the first half, it was maybe two teams that sort of aren't in great form and sort of, you know, didn't really want to sort of open up or get or sort of, you know, concede early and get beat. So we wanted to keep going the way we were first half. And the timing of the, the first goal is obviously, uh, you know, very, very poor. You know, we spoke about the first 10 minutes of the second half and within 90 seconds we've conceded a goal. I think it's a catalogue of errors from our point of view. I think uh, we had opportunity to get better clearances on the ball two or three times. And then, uh, I'm, you know, it, it's ended up in the back of our net. Um, after that, that's obviously knocked the stuffing out of us a little bit with the position we're in. And... Um, you know, as soon as we give that free kick away on the edge of the box in the second half, I know what's going to happen. And after that, it was a lot of huff and puff from us, but I didn't really see us coming back. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're not doing well enough. Uh, I'll try and say it as it is. The players aren't performing. Um, I've got to do something about it. Uh, we're not prepared to just continue like this. Um, so it's going to be a lot of hard work for me this week to try and bring players into the club and potentially move people on. So that is what I'm going to do. Uh, it's not good enough to lose four games on the trot. No matter what manager you are or wherever you are, you're always going to be under pressure uh, with that type of record. And um, although there were some positive signs today, particularly first half, we still haven't done enough. Uh, we need to bring players in very quickly because the players that I have brought into the club aren't doing the business for us. And, um, you know, we have to, we've got to move it on. We've got to move it on quickly. You know, it's going to be a very big four days for us. We've got Don Morgan Griffiths back on Saturday against Weymouth. Hopefully, Janaid Mead possibly uh, will be able to get out there for us. I'd like to mention Josh Castiglione today because... Um, We've played him slightly out of position at right back, but I thought he was one of our best players again. If you look at the running stats that he provided um, against Dover, he's run about two and a half kilometres more than anybody else on Saturday. Uh, and then he's done a great job for us out of position today. But that probably sort of uh, says where we are, that we're having to play key players like him out of position and that just to cover at the moment. We've got too many, we've had too many key players missing at the start of this season and the ones that we have brought in aren't doing well enough so there needs to be big changes you've changed systems you've changed personnel and like you say you're gonna to have to make some difficult decisions now but what is the mood in the dressing room because ultimately no one comes into a club and, and doesn't want to perform doesn't want to succeed but is it just a is it a mentality thing is it a work rate thing or is it just um, I, I don't think so i don't think that you you can say that we don't work hard enough do you know what it's um i think we're just some of the players just aren't good enough to be honest and it's very unusual for me to to say that about a group because you know we it, we, it's us we are in it together uh, but you know I, I, I've realised that we do need to change things I'm big enough to hold my hands up and say that some of the players that I brought into the club it hasn't worked out uh, some of the decisions we've made in the summer as I kept saying we wanted to keep certain players but we couldn't some of the players we wanted to bring in we couldn't but um, you know we, we, all of the ones that we have brought in have been my decision and uh, they're, uh, they're not performing well enough so um Big, big work for us to do, and um, but we'll keep going. That's all you can keep doing. You keep fighting. You know, when you're down and when it's disappointment, there's two things you can do: give up or roll over, or you can fight and keep going and do the very best you can. And uh, I think it's a good club here. The supporters, you know, are still backing us really well, even though that they're disappointed. And I'm determined to get it right. But yes, it's not the start we wanted after five games, um, and uh, we need to do something about it. So, so looking ahead to the, the the trip on Saturday, then what is it on training that you're going to kind of focus on around that game? Because see, they're in a very similar situation to ourselves. 
well, I, don't, I think it's uh, it, it, rather than sort of thing to focus on in training, I think we've got to change personnel, to be honest with you. Uh, I think most players would say, and most players that have been here would say that the training is very good. You know, we prepare for games professionally, but some of these players just aren't up to the task at the moment. And uh, I'm sorry to say that, and it's nothing personal, because like you say, nobody comes to the, the games and, you know, wants to sort of uh, lose. To be fair to the group of lads, they had a meeting amongst themselves. They came in early today and they wanted to try and put things right but you know there comes a point where for all of the want you've actually got to have the ability and the tactical nous and the physicality you know so uh, and we're not there at the moment Weymouth is a big game they're obviously down there haven't had a good start to the season either I think they've got sort of one or two issues themselves down there so it's an opportunity to go down there and fight and show some of that I thought we did provide that today and obviously the game petered out a little bit at the end but there are lads that are really low on confidence even though that's sometimes a bit of a cop out to say confidence because the only way to work your way out of that is just by sheer determination, hard work, perseverance. So, you know, we, we, we can't sort of just say, oh, well, we're low on confidence. You know, you have to work your way through that. But um, it be good to get a couple of players back on Saturday anyway. And then Kyler J.E. is uh, edging closer now. I think that's just three more games we've got to wait for him. But that's why it was such a blow for us uh, to, to lose people like Dom and Kyle because, you know, we have got that big physical centre-half, and that's Kyle Ajayi, but he's obviously been missing for eight games, you know, so that's a killer for us. Uh, we obviously brought Junaid Mead into the club. He was one of the best left-backs in the league last year. He hasn't kicked a ball for us yet this season, missing key midfield players in Dom. Uh, so hopefully we can get those lads back and it can, it can, uh, it can improve us. OK, so there's the thoughts of manager Mark Jones and... Uh, joining me in the studio is club captain Godfrey Poku. So that is, I, I can see by your body language and the chat that we had on the way up here, it's um, it, it's a challenging day and a challenging uh, time for, for you and the players. We know that the, that the lads got together before the game and, and had a chat. What are your thoughts after the game based on the whole of today? Um... I'll calm myself down before I say anything that's um, out of line, to be honest, but um, not good enough. End of. There's like, we can talk and we can give excuses and we can say this, oh, we done good the first half. But first half's gone. That that was gone. It's a new second half. We said it, we said it before the game, stay in the game. Don't concede early. Just stay in the game and we go out there and we couldn't see. I, I just, I literally don't understand. I don't get it. Um, I don't know what's going on, but things need to change and change pretty quickly. Because if not, um, our goals and our expectations, what we put down before the season, it's going to quickly fade away. Very, very quick. Um, yeah. And it was quite a, it was quite an even first half. I felt, you know, perhaps we even slightly shaded the first half in terms of some of the possession, and it, it did feel as if perhaps both teams didn't want to necessarily overcommit. Yeah. But it's it's just that that killer instinct, and I think that was missing from from Saturday as well. You know, we just don't yeah. we just aren't able to to get our, get into the box and, and create chances. Yeah, that, that's 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 it. It's a uh, um... We work on it in training and uh, trying to get the ball in the box, try and get our shots off um, in in and around the box. But come match day, it just seems like it just goes away. But I don't know if it's a confidence thing, just like what you said, both teams were a bit edgy. But I thought we edged the first half. But then again, I, I don't want to keep on talking about the first half because to me, that's gone. Like first half, it was nil, nil. At the end of the day, we lost the game, and I got to see it through. Uh, like us players, we got to take responsibility, and we got to take it quick, and we got to man up quick. Yes, we had a meeting before the game. I got the boys together, and I thought something has to be done. And everyone said basically the same thing: commitment, passion, which was shown, I think, in the first half. Um, we shaded it, um, but then it comes it comes down to a bit of quality, which I feel like 
we didn't have at times and we was panicking and flashing things across the goal and not getting our shots off well. But um, yeah, second half wasn't good, but the only positive thing, I'm trying to keep as positive as possible, but the only positive thing is we've got to try to build on from that first half performance. If we can somehow build build on that first half performance and then get uh, keep it up, then um, we've got a good chance. We've got a good chance. Now, this league is a very long league. The season is very long. Yeah. Uh, you've been involved in teams before yeah. that have had some really bad runs. Yeah. I remember you know, when we worked together at Worldstone yeah, a few yeah. years ago, there, yeah. was a, there was a period of time yeah, that was really, really yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, and you managed to get into the playoffs. Yeah. So you have that experience yeah. um, of those scenarios. Yeah. It's, not, it's not all doom and gloom, is it, going forward? Oh, no, 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 no. It's not all doom and gloom. But the only thing is you don't want to stay in this rut because like what you said I've been in this rut and I know how to get out of this rut definitely for sure but that's when we we really need to come together as a team as a club because I know it's us on the pitch but we need as much positive like energy around our club as possible I know it's us on the pitch and I know we uh, do it but we need everyone pulling in to the right direction. Um, but yeah, i got belief in the boys. i got belief in it. It's not all doom and gloom, but yeah, we got to get out of this rut pretty quick. But I think once we get our first point, I think we need to go back to the drawing balls and build, like, building blocks. Like, don't just go and... Yes, we need to win every game, but you know, we need to stay in games now because it's like two, three, four goals we're getting shipped in and, and and it's not good enough from us but hey yeah it's not all doom and gloom we've got to keep positive and, and um, Saturday is an opportunity going. Weymouth is you know it's an opportunity exactly similar scenario yeah. um, you know they yeah. haven't had the greatest of starts yeah. what would you say to those fans who might be thinking about making that trip on Saturday uh, you know what just please uh, uh, I'm, I'm begging you like, like just stay with the boys man like I've got faith in the boys. Uh, I've got belief in the boys. Please um, forgive us the way we have started, but things will change. I promise you that. I know how to change it. Um, I know what we need to do to change it. we got to get into the training we're in tomorrow. We're not supposed to be in, but we're in. And we're going to work hard again, simple as, because that's the, that's the only thing that can change is us because we're the ones on the pitch. So for all the fans and that, please just keep with us, keep positive and things will change. And it actually starts from Saturday. I know it's a cliche shout like we go again, but literally we got to go again. And we're not going to take nothing for granted and uh, we're just going to give it our best, literally. Well, best. Godfrey, thank you very much for your time. I know I'm probably the last person you want to speak to yeah, after, yeah. Uh, after a game like no. today. That's all right, no problem. But uh, thank you very much for your time. Cheers, mate.